What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, and we're here with a new segment I'm bringing onto the channel called I have no idea what I'm going to call it yet, but you'll see it in the title. Basically, it's called Treeb's Opinion Doesn't Matter, where I bring in a bunch of my friends that I've met either on Twitter, YouTube, anything like that that's in the Jags community that makes uh, YouTube videos or anything of that sort. And today, we have one of the most hilarious motherfuckers I've ever seen on Twitter. I got Mr. <laughs> Why You Mad in the building. How you doing, man? What's good, baby boy? <laughs> if you if you are not following Mr. Why You Mad on Twitter, you are missing out. From he's a chef too, so from when you know he'll post his great food that just looks insanely tremendous, and it makes you feel bad because you're like, I could never even come close to cooking that. And then you know he'll be making Jags videos, so you know he's definitely a must follow. Uh, just opened up a YouTube channel too. How's that going, my guy? It's going good, you know. Um, hopefully it'll pick up, but. You know, in time, it should, it should blow up. I'm trying to get to where you at, man. Hey, I appreciate that, dude. That just It just takes a lot of a lot of consistency and a lot of, you know, 12-view videos that you look at and you're like, what the fuck? No one's watching my shit. But eventually, <laughs> eventually you're going to build up. But anyway, today we're here to talk again about the wide receiver, <sighs> wide receiver week here on Treep Talks. And like I said, my opinion doesn't – isn't the be all end all obviously. So I bring these people on here. So I guess before I start asking you more specific questions, you know, what's kind of your overall thoughts on the Jaguars wide receivers heading into 2019? Um, I feel like it's a very talented group, but we have some inconsistencies in the wide receiver position. You know, um, D.D. Westbrook, I think with the addition of Nick Foles this year, should have a way better year than we had last year. Um, Marky Sleeve, we were already assisting at times. And we didn't get a chance to really see DJ Chalk. You know, um, and we don't know if Terrell Pryor is going to be that Terrell Pryor of a couple of years ago. So. so, you know, of the new additions, I guess there's basically two key ones. We got Chris Conley and Terrell Pryor. So I guess kind of touch on those two. You know, what do they bring to this team that you think is going to help out this team in the long run and go back to the postseason? Well, Chris Conley, him coming from that KC offense, he showed that he could be explosive at times. You know, he had to step up for Sammy Watkins. And um, I feel like if he gets the chance to be a full-time wide receiver, he can be a surprise for us. Um, he has at least speed. I know he ran a 4-3-40 at his combine around here. Um, the boy could play. It's not like the boy can't play. Yeah, the I boy could ball. Max, he could Max. ball. He could ball his ass off. It's just consistency. That's it. That's all we need to see. You know what I mean? He's having great OTAs. All I've been seeing and reading about is him being the best wide receiver in OTAs. And that's a good thing. You know what I mean? He hasn't missed the OTA yet. Um, Terrell Pryor, we don't know. I, that's, know. I've, been, I've been trying to preach that on YouTube so hard because you there's some people that comment and they're like, Terrell Pryor was all we needed. Terrell Pryor's like the answer to all of our problems. Like what you're really gonna put that on Terrell Pryor of all people? No. Like Terrell Pryor is like chocolate pudding. <laughs> Elaborate. If, if you like it, if you like it, it tastes good. But if you don't, you're spitting <laughs> it right back out, baby. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so. That's, so. chocolate pudding. I like that. I like that. <laughs> So you talked about uh you talked about DJ Chark a little bit and uh, people on my YouTube channel they haven't been so happy about my opinions on DJ Chark because I what I seen last year wasn't that great like you know when he came out in the draft DJ Chark was supposed to be you know this first round talent that'll step up and be a big play guy but it, he made so many awkward plays I, I I talk about this play a lot I don't know if you'll remember it but. This one game, he had this catch in his hands, and he basically just threw it, like, right behind behind himself. Like, it was just, like, the most atrocious Jaguar thing I've ever seen in my life. But, you know, if you had to, uh, you know, kind of talk about your opinions on DJ Chark this year, uh, what, would you, what would you have to say about him? Understanding the game. You know, um, he looked a little bit lost out there a couple of times, didn't know what route to run against what zone or couldn't figure it out if it was on a man and didn't know when to sit or where to keep going. You know what I mean? Um, 
wide receiver coach Keenan McCardell sat there and said that he's been doing a whole lot better with that. He's starting to be – a lot of people don't want to say it, but let's be honest. Now. A lot of it had to be with the quarterback play. Okay. You know, we don't know if he was open at times. We, we don't know. But with Nick Foles, we, we have a, a legitimate chance of trying to get this guy the ball. Listen, man, he's talented. Um, came out of LSU. Got him at his second round. He could have been a first rounder. You understand what I'm saying? Another one with elite speed. If we can get the ball in his hand, and if they say that he's starting to understand the concept of the game, then we never know. Listen, the wide receiver group can be can be the best in the NFL or could be the worst. And what do you tell? Because we have talent. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, it's strawberry sprinkles, baby, on ice cream. Strawberry sprinkles on ice cream. You know what I mean? It could be like that. You know what I mean? So, that's, you know, DJ Chalk, man, he, I feel like he could play inside, he could play outside. And I feel like if he go, slides inside, oh, man, forget it. Because there's no safety on the linebacker, no nickel will really cover that guy. So we got, we got Terrell Pryor, chocolate pudding, and we got DJ Chark, the strawberry sprinkles. I like, I like keep, what we got going on. I'm going to keep it coming, baby. <laughs> So my uh, my first leadoff question for you, and uh, I, I'll I'll go first with this one is I'm going to talk about the the biggest X factor this year out of these wide receivers. So basically, the way I see it, the Jags have six wide receivers. You got Marquise Lee, D.D. Westbrook, Keelan Cole, Terrell Pryor, D.J. Char, Chris Conley. I think, in my opinion, our biggest X factor this year is going to be Chris Conley. And something that I have to get completely out of the way because I said this in a video that he was small. Okay, he's not small. I don't know why I said that. He's 6'3". You know, you, know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I, people were tearing me up in the comment section because I was saying he was fast. And then, you know, I said in the moment when he said he's fast, he was small. But, you know, that, that's not what I'm talking about here. But Chris Conley, I think, has the ability to be the X-Factor guy. I think he's, he's either going to be, like, a decent guy like he was in KC where, you know, he can get us that 350, 400 yards, or he can lead the whole entire wide receivers and receiving yards this year. I'm very excited to see what Chris Conley can do this year. Uh, who do you think is the biggest X factor in that room is going to be this year? Whew. You got I, I have to go with uh, with Marquise. Um, we already know how hard it is to come back from a knee injury, but if he could come back half of what he was, you know, he ran that inside for us. He ran a lot of that underneath, you know, crisscross and everything. If you put him with Westbrook in the slot, and they run that, it's, it, it's literally unstoppable. Like, let's be honest. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? I, I was happy we saw my Marquise Lee back. Of course, I want to back Allen Robinson. He got hurt too. So, But um, I think the biggest abstract would be Marquise Lee. If Marquise Lee come back 80%, my receiver call could be dangerous. I'm glad you said that because Marquise Lee's been a, a guy I've been preaching on my channel personally saying that I think he's going to come back in a big way. I think he's going to lead the Jags in receiving yards this year. So I think he uh, he definitely is going to be a leader in this room uh, for sure. So, um, and, you know, it doesn't have to be the same player as an X factor, but uh, who, who would you say is going to lead the Jaguars in receiving yards this year? And will they get over a thousand yards? I think with so many weapons, it's going to be hard for anybody to get clear cut a thousand. You know what I, I mean? I mean, we got to make it that person hit that 800. Um, I, I got to go with you with the whole Chris Conley. Might be able to lead us in, in receiving. Um, if you look at the Eagles offense when they had, uh, when they had DeFilippo, when he was in, in, he was in uh, Minnesota, wide receivers did well. Very well. You know what I mean? You know, why did well? And I think that for Chris Conley, this is his coming out party. You know, you got to play behind Tyreek Hill and you got to play behind Sammy Watkins. You know, I mean, boy came in, he had seven touchdowns. To get one touchdown is hard. He had seven. You understand? Yeah. But if he comes and he plays the way we know he can play, and he's going to put it all in line. You know, forget it. This is his chance to be number one. I feel like he could lead us to receive it. Chris Conley for I feel like you're going to see a lot of jerseys out there. I feel you. I feel you. And uh, just to clarify on my end, Chris Conley is not small. I understand that. Okay, so before we uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
before we move on here, uh, the next thing I want to ask you is, um, you know, we talked about the good, you know, with how these wide receivers are going to be in 2019. Um, who do you think is going to take a step back or who do you think is going to kind of be the wide receiver that kind of underperforms and performs probably not to the caliber that we hope that he will in 2019? Terrell Pryor. Terrell, Terrell Pryor. Pryor. Terrell Pryor. Terrell Pryor. An easy, that's an easy one. Uh, what do you yeah. think about uh, Keelan Cole this year? Keelan Cole, man, listen, we've seen him. He can catch one hand the ball, back behind on his head, you know what I mean? And other days he can't catch a cold, you know what I mean? In 20-degree weather with no shirt on. So, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, Keelan Cole, man, undrafted, came in. Blue, blue, you know, had a little good season. After week, week three, we, we, we were saying, oh, well, hey, look what we got. You know, we thought we had a whole other Alan Hearn situation. Mudslide, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Mudslide, you know what I mean? But Keenan Cole, man, like I said, huge upside, man. He got to get his confidence back. If he gets his confidence back and he plays the way he knows he can play, you never know. Sky's the limit. So, you know, uh, we've kind of – we've touched on almost all these receivers now, and uh, it, it feels weird that the only receiver we really haven't touched on is the guy that balled out last year and a guy that everybody is very, very excited to see play this year, and that's D.D. Westbrook, of course. Um, D.D. Westbrook, I think, this year has a great season. I think he will do just fine. Like, I'm talking probably 700, 800 yards. And I – everything you said about us having a lot of targets spread around the field – and no one being a clear-cut 1,000-yard guy, 100% agree with that. I don't think that the way that these wide receivers are built, you know, uh, from a perspective that none of them stand out as a true number one guy, you know, all these guys are going to get open. So I don't think anybody's going to get 1,000 yards. And uh, D.D. Westbrook has been, you know, the argument for people saying, you th you're crazy if you don't think D.D. Westbrook gets over 1,000 yards with Nick Foles. You know, what, what's your stance on D.D. Westbrook this season? Oh, you got to remember, when D.D. Westbrook came out of Oklahoma, man, Belitnikoff with him, um, tore it up in Oklahoma. We got him in the fourth round due to um, some off-the-field issues. He's going into year three. We haven't heard not one thing wrong about D.D. Westbrook yet. I feel like he got it. He gets it. You understand what I'm saying? Um, and I feel like when you mature and you get it, you want it more. You know what I mean? And he, he wants it more. He wants it more. So I feel like D.D. Westbrook would be uh, – Kind of a Cooper Cup, Julian Edelman with more swag in his, in his, in, 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 the, uh, in the slot. But he plays his best at. Let's be real. He he could do it on the outside. In the slot, that's D.D. Westbrook right there. That's where he belongs, right there. And I feel like if you get 65 to 70 catches out that man, 800 yards, he did his job. He did his job. And what's that? We got we we got Nick Foles, man. They call him BDN. You know what I'm saying? BDN, baby. We got BDN tossing the rock. You know what I mean? The DD West. Man, look, I'm I'm excited. I don't, I don't give a damn what nobody say. You know what I mean? I, I you can that. throw five number three receivers out there, and I'm gonna sit and say we got the best wide receiver call in the NFL. You know what I mean? But honestly, this year, I feel like this is one of the most talented wide receiver calls we had in a long, long time. See, I agree with that. I agree with that uh, heavily, dude. Like, I, I don't know about – so the best – the most talented is a very, very good way to put it. I don't think that this may be the best wide receiver group we've had in a while because, I mean, I think the – I mean, fuck, you can't even – it might be. Like, I mean, honestly, with, with what you're saying, it could be because, I mean, even the year Allen Robinson, Allen Hearns went off, I mean, that was basically the whole Allen Robinson, Allen Hearns show. Like, that, no one else was really around. But, you know, I make this case to a lot of people that aren't Jags fans, that we have these wide receivers that make plays, and we got a new quarterback with Nick Foles. And you, you're a lot like me, too. I remember I seen you on Twitter. You know, you did not want Nick Foles at first. You know, I was the same way. Same exact way, dude. Did not want Nick Foles in the slightest, but now that I see him coming around in those OTAs and, you know, seeing what he's doing already, like, I mean, I really think Nick Foles, like, for years, Jags fans have been saying, we just need a game manager. We just need a guy that can go out there, not turn the ball over. 
we have a Super Bowl MVP at quarterback this year with Nick Foles, you know, and you've already, you've been talking Nick Foles up a lot in this video, you know, kind of keep doing that. Tell me what you expect from Nick Foles this year. I expect close to 4,000, not probably above 4,000, but close to 4,000, probably anywhere between 25 to 26 touchdowns. Um, he doesn't turn the ball over a lot. The best thing about Nick Foles, he throws a hell of a deep ball. Yep. He launches that, man, straight up. You know what I mean? That man launches that, man. I, I, I don't know what else he might be doing with that right arm, but whatever he's doing with that right arm, player, he got he to gotta keep it going, man. You know what I mean? Because he launches that rock. He <laughs> launches that rock, man. You know what I mean? And when you, when you get him, if you look what he did with Alshon Jeffrey and, and Al Galar and what he had, you know what I mean? Sean Jeffrey never tried pass against the Saints. We might be talking about the Eagles having another ring. That's you know yes. He brought them back. back. He brought them back. You know what I mean? And I know a lot of Eagles fans on my end in NYC who wanted Nick Foles over Carson Wentz. And this is no lie because they said the man don't get hurt. He plays. He's consistent. And the offense that he's in is the offense that he needs to be. See, St. Louis had a wrong. Casey had a wrong. You understand? He he thrived in Chip Kelly's offense. He got back to that type of offense when he was with Doug Peterson. And then we bring in his quarterback coach who's going to run the same exact offense. Come on, man. And if you look at the wide receiver call, the last time I said a wide receiver call that we didn't have a 1,000-yard receiver and we was able to spread the ball around, and you're going to laugh, Reggie Williams, Mike Sims Walker, <laughs> Ernest Wolfwood. <laughs> Do you remember that? That's a, David Garrard. I'm telling you, do you remember that? 2007. Come on, man. <laughs> Unstoppable. Unstoppable. We have bugged out Matt Jones, but he was probably in a locker room banging his head against the wall trying to get the voices out of his head. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's what you that's what you have right now. Yeah. That's what you have. You have a quarterback who who's coming in who knows the game, one of only two quarterbacks to be Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. Um, and he played lights out there. And for him to come back after what he just experienced with his wife. For real. And to come back and step right back in the fold and start leading again, that, that just made everybody love him. Whoever didn't like Nick Foles before then, Nick, they love him now. They love him now. That's big facts. All right. Hey, man, I appreciate you for coming on to the channel. I think we're going to wrap this thing up a little bit, guys. Make sure that if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video. All my links are down below, featured by Mr. Why You Mad's links as well. You know, plug your shit, man. Go ahead. Oh, man, you mad. You big <laughs> mad, baby. Mr. Why You Mad, man. Hit me up on Instagram, hit me on Twitter. You know how we do, man. I got my homie here. We're going to keep it rolling. I hope he hit me back for a couple more calls and everything like that. And that's it, man. You big mad, baby. <laughs> hey, I appreciate you for coming on, and I appreciate all you guys for watching this video. And thank you guys for watching it, and you guys have a great rest of your day.